Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Benizamakwe Zamakwe of Living Streams International. We meet behind the trade fair behind Zenith College in Accra. This morning I want to capture it in when the crowd leaves. You know, um, looking at the lifestyle of Jesus, I, I must be very honest with you. I don't look at scripture through the eyeglasses of tradition. I don't look at scripture through traditional eyeglasses. I like to be investigative. I'm curious. And you remember, I mean, in... Uh, one, one of the chapters, the earlier chapter, Jesus multiplied five loaves of bread and uh, three fish, and boy, he had a crowd. That day, Pastor Jesus, Pastor Jesus, his congregation was 5,000 men minus the women. They've not mentioned the women. They don't mention the children. I mean, that Jesus had a real, real big congregation, you know, and uh, just by a miracle, he gathered all of them together. And then the next time they came around for him to preach, and of course, do his show and one more time. This time he, he, he preached a bad sermon. Pastor Jesus <laughs> preached a bad sermon. Please don't really take me to that. I'm just painting a picture before you. That will make scripture simple. Now, uh, after Pastor Jesus had preached, the people said, what, what is this? And I'm sure someone said, I knew it. I told you that this guy is deranged. But the bottom line is, everybody left except 12. So in one day, in one day, Pastor Jesus lost so many members that, and, 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 and then comes the most interesting thing. And after they were gone, you, you know, uh, the Bible said he turned to his disciples and said, would you also go? And uh, guess what? That statement he made, a lot of people were saying as if he was, I don't care. I mean, like an I don't care uh, person. But mind you, when he came, he was, he was like us. So a human being like us. And if I am Jesus and, you know, uh, people have come and gone like that, I'll be very worried. And so for me, it wasn't a, a statement of, like, a rebellion, like, would you also go? Or, you know, uh, boastful, you, know, you can go, you can go away. No. But I, I see it more as a plaintive statement, like, w will, you, will you also go? And I, I'm saying that based upon Peter's uh, response, you could see that Peter's response was more, was more, um, uh, what do we call it, encouraging. Peter's point was more, he was more on the, on the positive side. He was, he was like, and guess how Peter said it? After Jesus asked that question, preemptively, you get it? And then Peter comes out in the aggressive tone. And then he said, where, where are we going? I mean, what are they talking about? Where are we going? To, to whom are we going to? Who? You, you have the words of life. And there's nobody else like you. You know, I see the voice of Jesus in a plaintive sense, and I see the, the voice of, of uh, Peter in an aggressive sense. And here is the thing. Every, every leader, at one time or the other, will go through a bad patch, and where there will be desertions, where people would leave you. And uh, you'll be very, very surprised. I mean, I've seen leaders who had a... a a coterie of people, courtesans all around him. Then all of a sudden he loses an election or something. Everybody disappears. And he's left all by himself alone. And now here's the, here's the interesting thing. See what Peter said. Peter said, who has the words of life? Who are we going to? So now, Peter began to make a statement every leader needs and your pastor needs it too. Because your pastor is going to go through some very bad patches. Your pastor is going to go through some very depressive moments. Your leader, your boss, or whoever it is, is going to go through some of those moments. And that is when he needs people who are going to stand up and bring him a couple of things. Number one, bring him an assurance. An assurance that we are with you. The leader needs that assurance. So you need to bring that assurance and say to him, we, we, we are going nowhere. We are with you. We are standing with you. I don't like the people who say, well, we are standing with you in spirit. 
<laughs> and then they are far away. And then in their head, they will say, oh, you about Ochi Nasusu tomorrow, <laughs> or something like that. No, I don't like people like that. That is a, it's good for him next time, you know. But here's, here's the principle. Every leader needs an assurance. So sometimes you need to look at, maybe your husband is a leader in the house, you need to let him know, boy, you're the, you're the guy, you're the man. Tell your pastor he's the person. He needs that assurance. Number two, apart from assurance, he needs the applause. You know, so sometimes we need to stand up for them and give them a clap and say, you're doing good, keep going, we are with you. And then number three, approval. You know, I mean, the, the voice of approval. Hey, ministry is a tough walk. And I can tell you that there are pastors who are going through all sorts of torrid situations, even because of the COVID. You have no idea what they go through. And sometimes the voice of approval, a text message, a shout out, or a, I, I won't say this loudly, less people take me to the, a, a drop in his account. You know, you know what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. You understand? Yeah, something to let him know that you, you, you approve. And then appreciation. So um, you, you need to bring an assurance to him. You need to let him know you approve. And then you need to let him know you appreciate and then give him the applause. It is very, very important. These A's are important. And that is exactly what, what uh, Peter did. In times of crisis, leadership needs encouragement. In times of, of desperation, when everybody else is down, leadership needs that encouragement. And here's the point. As a leader, maybe the encouragement is not going to come. But you have to also find it in you to encourage yourself like David. And David said, the Bible said, David encouraged himself in the Lord. So sometimes with your pastor, with a leader, you need to, to let him know that, hey, we are standing with you, not just in spirit, but in the flesh. Give him the applause. Give him the approval. Raise the thumb and say, keep going, boss. And uh, give him the um, assurance that you ain't going nowhere and that you are standing with him, and then also give him the appreciation. Demonstrate my little acts of love that you are standing with him. Hey, there's those moments, you understand, when the crowd goes away. Your leader needs you. God bless. See you around.